Hey guys, how's it going today? It's a rainy day and it's cold and miserable, so let's play some War Thunder. But I'm going to change things up a little bit here. I see a lot of videos here on YouTube talking about high tier jets, props of anywhere between battle ranking 5 and onward. You know, you, you get a lot of high tier stuff on here. Occasionally, you'll see a low tier plane review come up every now and again. But, it really doesn't cater to what I feel like is the majority of players in this game. Now, I haven't looked at any numbers or anything, so I could just be, you know, making up stuff right on the spot. But there's something I did want to talk about, and... Let me know, guys, if this is something you want to be interested in, because I wanted to kind of talk about low-tier planes, and just in general. And I'm going to start off kind of doing one nation to another, and just sort of telling you what to expect, what to, you know, look for, and your strengths and weaknesses when flying reserve low-tier Aero 1 aircraft. So... Here we have a lovely BF-109F4 around the hangar right now. But I'm not going to be talking about the Germans today. No. I want to start off with some disappointment. The Italians. So the Italians were, were released hmm, a bit of, a, a, a while ago. Now, they have a decent tech tree, all the way up to rank 5. Got some jets. They got good line of bombers. Couple reserve planes. You know, they're still relatively new. But there is a problem with flying the Italian aircraft in War Thunder. Most of these planes especially these G-50s and the Series 200s, we've already seen before. CR-42s, Marcolin CR-42 Falco. For the longest time, they were in the German tech tree. And I can't say I would know but if you were to make an account today and go to the German tech tree, I don't know if these are there anymore. This whole little line right here. All Italian planes. Marcolin CR-42. That used to be the gift premium. When you first play War Thunder, the first nation, whether it's in tanks or planes, every nation has like a tier 1 premium that they gave away. You, you won in that nation, here you go. It's the first win in War Thunder. You get a free little premium plane. And for the Germans, for the longest time, it was Mark Holland's C-42, CR-42, Falco. Oh, not test flight, preview. Uh, just customization then. There we go. But... When the Italians came in, they just took everything out of the German tech tree and just put it on the Italians. So, these aren't really new planes. These are planes we've already flown before. These are planes we're used to and planes we've either kept or moved on from. Now we, we just have to play them again. But anyway, moving on. What, what is to ex be expected from these low tier tier 1 planes you get a few of them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 7, 8, 9 10, 11 now that's actually not a lot especially if you compare it to somebody like the Americans the British the Germans basically everybody else in the game 
other than the French. They're the brand new guys, and immediately, in my opinion, I think they overshadow the French. I just, I just think they're just, they're just, they're the French. Sorry, the French overshadow them. Like they're just so much better. But let me, let me get to explaining why. All right. So the first planes that you get are these three right here: the CR32 quarter, the CR32, and the BA65. Now. Every nation kind of starts off with biplanes or something similar to them. You know, fun little dinky, just, you know, just little fly toys. That's really all they are. There's really nothing super amazing about them. But let's take a closer look at these planes. So from the first thing you're going to notice is that every plane here at Tier 1... It's going to have the exact same problem as every other Italian plane in Tier 1. The CR-32s are going to have the same problem as the CR-42s and the G-50s, and then the C-200s. And it all comes down to the guns. The guns on the Italian planes are the 12.7mm... Berta S. Safat, Safat, whatever you have to pronounce it, machine guns. Now, for those of you that don't know, 12.7 is a 50 cal. And as you can see with even the low tier American planes, they also get 50 cals. There's a 50 cal. Well, that one's Japanese, but still 50 cal. There's a 50 cal. There's a 50 cal. There's a 50 cal. There's a 50 cal. But there's a massive problem with these 50 cals. They're Italian 50 cals, which means they're basically the equivalent of whacking your enemy planes with a wet noodle. These 50 cals, these 12.7 millimeters, fire slower and they have a slower muzzle velocity so you're gonna have to aim a lot further and a, you're gonna have to compensate for distance and movement a lot more than the American 50 cals and that's the same thing over and over again 250 cals 250 cals. I'm sorry, 350 cals. 250 cals. 250 cals. 250 cals. 250 cals. Now, these planes are excellent to fly, and they're also very unique looking. Every single one that's gotten here has a unique camouflage painted onto it, and I am a big sucker for these camouflages. The Berta 88 even get some options in terms of its camouflages. If this thing will ever load. Any freaking day now. Alright, doesn't like that one apparently. See? You get you get something different. Now, the problem, again, with the Italians, the low tiers, is the guns. Now, if we go into actually looking at the planes, the guns are mounted on top, which means that they're going to be firing through the propeller hub. Now, normally this isn't a problem. When you have wing-mounted guns, the problem is it comes down to convergence. With convergence, your guns 
will fire and then meet at a target. When you set your convergence, you're, set, you're setting how close you want the guns to cross. But with nose-mounted weapons, you don't really need to worry about that. So, just talking from a general sense of what to expect from these planes. We'll start off with the low-tier stuff. We're going to assume that Italy is the first plane you fly, or the first nation you fly, and you get a win. So you get Mark Holland's CR-42. So this right here is your lineup. You these four planes here. You start off with the CR-32. It's a biplane, so you're going to have a decent turn time of 13.5 seconds. Now, in War Thunder, that's only a rudder turn, but if you turn your elevators and actually turn sideways and actually complete a circle, it's going to be about half of that. A you know, little bit slower with a 32 quarter and even a little bit slower that with a CR-42, but that's just because they just probably weigh more. They probably have different engines, eh, something similar to that. But realistically, there's nothing super different between the CR-32 and the CR-42. I'm going to use this one because I don't have this one fully unlocked yet, so... This one's going to have all the stats of a fully upgraded CR-42. Yeah, you're a little bit faster. You turn a little bit better in the CR-32 than the 42. But realistically, you're not going to have much of a problem with maneuverability in these planes. Then you move on to the BA-65. Now, the BA-65 is an attacker. Meaning it's best built for ground targets. Now, when you first get the plane, you're not going to have any bombs. But, instead of having just the 250 cals, you've got two 30 caliber guns here in the wings. Two 7.7s. Now, they fire a lot faster than the 12s. They're actually pretty decent guns. You also get the same gun that's in the front here with the 7.7s in the back here. Kind of show you out on a test flight here. Just to kind of show you what to expect when you first unlock this plane. The BA-65 really isn't a bad aircraft because it has multiple guns. It, the the 12.7s have backups. So, as you can tell with the rear gun, pretty decent rate of fire, pretty decent cone of fire too, but from my experience, you don't really want to rely on that guy in the back too much. So. The difference between the large guns and the small guns. Those are your small guns. And the ones in the middle here. Those are your big guns. Those are your 50 cals. Now, why do I think this plane is the best plane out of the reserved aircraft? If for Italy is because of those multiple guns. You don't get a lot of attack aircraft super low tier. I mean, there is a few, but I mean, we're talking about good ones. And I would have to say, this is a good one. Excuse me here while I just... Lower the sound a little bit there. Now, since it's being attacker, it has the option to carry two 50 kilogram bombs or two 100s. I usually use the two 100s just because it has a larger blast radius. You can take out larger targets. 
But at this little battle ranking, the biggest thing you're probably going to have to take out is a light pillbox, something on lines of that, which when you have the right belts, uh, in theory, your 50 cows would be able to take out. So, that's the BA-65. But, when it comes down to the rest of the planes, in terms of their flight performances, the Italian planes are not really good at much, unfortunately. Now, this is something you'll have to just pick up in battle, but... That 15.2 second turn time on the G50s and the the C200s, that sounds pretty decent, but these planes also like to bleed a lot of speed. They lose their speed very quickly. That 14.3 turn time is only really good the first two or three turns. After that, that's going to drop to maybe almost 20, it feels like. And up against things like this. Up against I-15s. Up against things that have almost single-digit turn times. These things will eat you alive. Russian planes, even some of the low-tier German planes, like this HE or HS-123 here, this thing will eat you alive. So the key to staying alive in low-tier Italian aircraft is fast. Be fast. Which, I know it's kind of hard with biplanes, but I'm more of the lines focusing on the uh, monoplane fighters here, which also another downside to these monoplane fighters is you have a very large radial engine here in the front. And if we go to check the armor, oh look, it doesn't have any. This thing has no armor whatsoever. And what's behind the engine? Fuel tank. Fuel tank. Fuel tank. Fuel tank. These things, when they catch on fire, tend to not want to put the fire out. And then you'll just explode or your engine will die and then you'll just crash. Looking at the x-ray, though, you see that everything is kind of just focused in the middle. There's really nothing super far stretched out here other than the wing spars. Which don't actually take up that much surface area. There's your control wiring there. Your control your the rest of your wings out here. But any hits to the back here, since there is no armor plating, your pilot's gonna get killed fairly, fairly easily. So, again, the best way I would say, at the beginning of the battle, climb, just dive down on people, and then use that speed to get away. Because you try to turn on anybody, and that biplane is going to be able to just get on your six, and he doesn't even need to really aim. If he has the right amount of guns or decent rate of fire, he doesn't even need armor-piercing belts to go through you. He'll just... You'll just die. And in terms of you killing other planes, these guns, since they fire so slow, and they don't... They don't fly very fast. The bullets coming out of this have a very slow muzzle velocity. Your opportunities to shoot at people are going to be very few and far between. And when you do hit, you're only going to hit maybe one or two rounds. 
only because at this low of battle ranking, you're going to have to have decent aim to hit these biplanes. Now, looking at the ammunition, now, by the way, I'm just using the G50 here as an example, but this kind of goes for all the Italian fighters at Battle Ranking 1, since they're the same guns. Looking at the belts, the types of ammunition you have, your default belt comes with a tracer round, a ball round, which is basically it's just a bullet. There's nothing fancy about it. An incendiary bullet and an armor-piercing bullet. So when you're upgrading these, you want to get these belts as fast as you can, just so you can get off of this. But unfortunately, the belts moving on from here don't really offer you that much else. You have a universal belt, which is armor-piercing, armor-piercing, immediate action incendiary, armor-piercing, incendiary. Armor-piercing, armor-piercing, incendiary, armor-piercing incendiary, and then immediate action incendiary, and then armor-piercing. So armor-piercing bullets are good at taking down bombers, ground attackers, things that are built to take punishment, things that are built to be resilient. There's not a lot of planes at this below a battle ranking that are going to have that much armor. Japanese low-tier planes, your bullets will fly right through them. They have nothing. Same for the British. They don't have anything. Russians? Mm, you might have a piece of armor here and there if you go up against something like a MiG-15. But that's really only for the pilot. So, unfortunately, most of your rounds aren't going to do that much. They're either going to fly straight through, or you're just going to completely miss. Because the bullets fly so slow and you're trying to hit a target that's moving so quickly. Now moving up the ladder a little bit, it does get better. It does get better. I don't have it unlocked, but the C202, you do have 12.7 millimeters here in the nose and the 7.7s here in the wings, so it does get a little bit better. But once you start getting down here, the C202 EC, the 2053, the G55, these things have cannons. They have MG151s, which are German cannons in Italian planes. So the tech tree does get better. It's just getting through this is going to be very painful for me. At least for me. I don't know what the experiences could be for anybody else. I can only go off of what I know. Now, in terms of the bombers, the S-81 is actually not that bad. Yes, it is a incredibly slow aircraft, 195 miles an hour. Granted, this plane is also not fully upgraded, but chances are most things are going to be able to catch up to you. You do have a decent bomb loadout. But in arcade at low tiers like this, it's very rare to actually get a map that has proper bombing targets. So you're probably just going to have to bomb AA guns, artillery emplacements, maybe a light pillbox or something. But other than that, you're probably going to have to fly a lot lower than what you're comfortable at, which... Any bomber that flies low at this low of battle ranking is going to get shot up. Fortunately, though, you do have some very nice guns. They're all the 7.7 Bre uh, Breda machine guns, or they're the 7.7 .7 Lewis machine guns, which 
don't fire as fast or really have, in my opinion, that terms of performance, but they're still better than the 12.7s. Then moving up, you get the BR-20, which is basically... It's basically a two-engine version of the previous plane. You do lose out on a few guns. You don't have your midsection guns here. But you still have that turret that spins 360 degrees and basically covers the entirety of the top and the rear of the aircraft. You do have another little gun down here that points in a decent firing arc, but the big problem with these are actually the tail. If a plane is sitting on you right here and is shooting at you, this gunner can't hit you because you'll have to shoot through his own tail, your own tail to do it. But, decent bomb load. Fairly slow, but they're also fairly tough. So, if you can get decent enough at aiming with these gunners, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. But anyway, that's enough talking about the planes here. Let's actually show what I'm talking about in a battle here. So I'm going to start off with my 1.7 to 2.0 battle ranking. Now, in War Thunder, how it works in terms of battle ranking system and matchmaking, you're going to... You might see 3.0 aircraft. Generally speaking, that's the highest thing you're going to see. Usually, the battle ranking, it says, at least on the Wikipedia, you can see 4.0 planes in this lineup, but those are very rare. 3.0 is going to be the highest thing you're going to see. With lineups like this, you're mostly going to be seeing biplanes, low-tier reserve aircraft. They're really not that threatening of a match, but... Also at this battle ranking, anything can kill anything. So, let's hop into a match here and see what's up. Hopefully we can get one here pretty quick, and we do. So, grinding down the Italian tech tree has been a kind of a chore for me, just because... I really don't like these planes. That's just my personal opinion. They're great to look at. They're very unique. But the problem is, is that we've already seen them once before. And they're just not that great. Now, I usually go with the stealth belts on the 12.7s. Because it has half of its belt is immediate action incendiary. So it's not armor piercing. Also, with that slow of rate of fire and that slow of bullets in the air, I don't want my enemy to know that he's being shot at. And that's with any gun, but with these, you need that extra time and you need the element of surprise. So, let's go. Let's go fly out and see what we can do. Just like I said, there seems to be like a lot of biplanes, low-tier stuff, I-15, SU-2s. Mostly just the little dinky, what's supposed to be the fun stress toys when high tiers have got you down. But flying these things can be just as stressful as anything else. Not because you need to perform well. It's because these guns just don't kill anything. One other thing with these guns... For some reason or another, when you use the tracer belt, it creates a lot of smoke in front of the aircraft, and sometimes that can be quite distracting sometimes. So we got a 112 down here. I would much rather have his guns versus what guns I've got. Miss there. Kind of pull over and... I'm not wanting to go head on with him. Yep, as we already got a Spitfire on us. 
Use these fly towards friendlies. Get them off our tail here. Hopefully we can get on the tail of this HE-112. Got a few hits. Also, for one reason or another, these pla these planes like to have a little bit of trouble with the nose. That's another thing I like to call these planes, is assist machines. You'll bring in a lot of assists with the few hits you get on enemy aircraft. As you can tell in just those few maneuvers, I'm already really slow. There's a G50 on me. Now he must be more upgraded than me because he's able to turn on me as much as he is. See how just much energy you lose? And just really any plane can get on your six. to stay in a straight line so these people behind me can shoot this guy. Which I think they did. Nope. He's just waving off. I haven't even done that much and my plane's already super shot up. Russians decide to delete me from the sky. I die with one assist. Still a little loud here. Let me. Well, that was that one. Let's try the RE 2000 or the RE 2000. It's kind of the meme plane from. The Italian tech tree. Every every tech tree has a couple of meme planes, and this plane it's a little bit faster than the rest of the others, so you can at least maintain your speed better. But it still has the wet noodle launchers. That plane decided that ramming was the best cause of action. Got some hits. Extend out before rolling over. Get this A5 M4 on my teammate. I'm not going to be able to keep up with that. I've got what feels like a couple planes on me. Yep, hit. It's the French, who, like I said, We'll just wipe the floor with you. All right, I'm gonna try the Ber the Berta 88. It has three of them in the nose, three of the 12.7s. So I'm hoping maybe it'll be more effective, but up against planes like these, any maneuver I make, I'm just gonna have several planes on me. And it appears that my team is not doing very well at all. I'm gonna climb a little bit more before I... Yeah, and their entire team is over here on the other side. Let's dive down this way so at least we dive closer to our air spawn. Let's get this HE-51 in the back. with Italian aircraft. I didn't even know I was that close to him. If there is one saving grace to the Italian low tiers is that because they are 50 cals, they at least have the same mass in their bullets, which means they should be decent at ground attacking. 
but again, because of the muzzle velocity of the guns, it's going to be fairly difficult to get some guns on target. Zoom on through, climb back up. And got the assist. Now this plane is fully upgraded, so we'll see the best of what this has to offer. I am not going after that F-222 because that thing is a flying tank. And I do not have the weaponry to take out those kind of vehicles. Got another hit with another kill assist. It's just the guns don't fire fast enough or hit hard enough to really be effective. Got a hit. Gonna have to dive away. Keep the speed up. BF-109E is going to wreck me. He has got four very fast-firing guns. And I'm not going to base my entire judgment solely off of this one battle. I did make a few mistakes. But that's just because low-tier arcade battles are just chaos. And I really don't like biplanes as is. So planes like this are just going to be more difficult for me to want to grind through. But, unfortunately, I want this stuff down here, so... Mm, I'll finish getting that, and then I'll start grinding the 202. The 202 is over in the German tech tree here. And it is probably one of my favorite low-tier German planes. Just because it is very fast. Has a decent turn time, but you really just want to use this thing as a boom and zoom aircraft. Climb up high. Dive on enemies. If you don't get the kill, don't chase after them. Just use your speed. Make distance. And then climb back up and start over. I do have the tricolor Luftwaffe camouflage just because it is in the German tech tree so I figure why not make it look like a German plane heading back over to the Italians we'll see what we can do once again it they're they're decent enough planes it really just comes down to the guns. Alright, so we got Berlin Suburbs, which is a bit more open. The ground and the ground targets are more spread out. So it's not all in one big fur ball of chaos. Which I wish is something that more maps did was have maps be spread out a little bit more. Just so not every match is going to be a massive furball. Now heading out in the 88 here. It is completely stock. And I have to pick my targets fairly carefully. So I want to go after that PBY that's out there. But I'm scared of this Key 61 because that is a very very dangerous aircraft to me. It looks like he's more interested in something over there, though. Or he's running from an HE-100. So it looks like a hole's kind of opened up here, and maybe I can head after this PBY. See what three of them grouped up in the nose can do. Another saving grace about the guns, at least, is that since they fire so slowly, you're going to have decent uh, ammo uh, ammo conserve. So. Uh, 
I got a gunner. Tuck it back down. Come up here. If I can get the nose to get down, I can... Yep. Hey, there we go. One of the rounds must have gone through and uh, hit the pilot. Although he did hit both of my very large engines very hard. They're both already dark red. That's another problem with the Italian planes is that they are very large, easy to hit engines. But I'm just going to finish this out the best I can. You're most likely going to have to kill pilots with these guns. They're just not that effective against structural parts of the aircraft. Now this guy's wanting to go head on with me. And he snipes my pilot. But I did manage to hit his engine. The, the B-88, that's what I'm going to call it. Head out in the RE-2000. This thing's probably the fastest Italian low-tier aircraft. I wouldn't know 100% sure, but just based off of initial first time flying it out, it does seem fairly quick. That Key-61 is getting a little close to me, though, and I don't want Key-61s on me. I would like to go after that P-26 there, but this guy's shadowing me, so I'm going to have to kind of move over this way. There's a very slow... See? Oh, well, now he's dead now. What just went under me? I'll have to... Alright, DO-17Z. Let's... Alright, a couple of hits. Gotta... Yep. And just like that, I lost my engine. Can I get some payback, though? No, I'm not going to be able to maneuver with him. Very large radial on this one, so... And the guy that I was shooting at... Yeah. Welcome to Italians and War Thunder. Hopefully, hopefully they get some kind of buff from these guns. Because they're wonderful looking aircraft. They fly decently well when they're fully upgraded. They just... They just don't bring a lot to the table in terms of a fun... As you can see how many rounds I put into him there. And he's still just flying, just shakes it off like it was nothing. Kill assist, 150 points and 30 credits. Yeah, these things are assist machines. They're really good at annoying the enemy, not too good at actually killing them. Attention to the designated grid square. So guys, if you want, let me know if this is a series you'd like to watch. Kind of go through, kind of that, English. Kind of going through all of the low tier, tier one uh, planes from each nation. See if I can get some brownie points off of him. No, I'm almost crammed into him. There's a single piece of artillery out there, but... I'm gonna snag this one. Hey, you know what? 
round's almost over anyway. Let's try to salvage some points from this. And like I said, for having two guns, they actually hit pretty hard in terms of ground targets. So, I will admit most of my points that I've gotten from spading out these planes are from mopping up ground targets. I thought there was something out here. Take this artillery battery. Keep it up and victory will be ours. If I can find where my bullets are going, maybe... Maybe stealth belts aren't the, uh best for taking out ground targets, but a single hit again. There's some planes above me now, though. You need to aim very far ahead of the lead indicator, and now I've got planes on me. Oh, it's distracted. Eh, at least we've won this time. But yeah, so guys, let me know what nation you'd like to see next. I know it's kind of weird starting off with one of the worst nations in terms of low tier aircraft. But at least from here, it only gets better. And at least tell me from this, if there's one thing you take away from this, is that the Italian planes do get better. They do 100% get better. Sorry, I'm more focused on making this thing a heavy fighter than an actual attacker. But the CR-32s, the CR-42s, the BA-65, I would say, is probably the best, probably the best plane out of this low-tier group here, this Tier 1, probably by far, I, I, if I were to put money on it. Yeah, it looks weird. Yeah, it's kind of slow. But it at least can shoot down something when you need it to. Plus, being able to carry bombs makes it a fairly decent ground attacker. But anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you have a great day.